Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we'll be looking at how household pets, cats and dogs, like my buddy Cody here or my co-star today, travel on airline jets. Where do our furry friends get loaded onto a plane? Why they don't freeze due to extreme temperatures or suffocate due to lack of oxygen in the cargo hold? And what all of that has to do with your household refrigerator. Cody, you ready? Bark if you are. Oh, sir. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, a little enthusiasm here, please. Let's get started. <laughs> That's my mate just gone. Delta 401 Evie Kennedy Ground, runway 319 shortened. Left Bravo at Hotel Bravo. Follow El Al. Let's first take a look at where your luggage gets stored on a standard airline jet. If we look at a passenger jet from a front perspective and we draw a line halfway through the hole representing the cabin floor, the fuselage gets divided into the passenger compartment, better known as the cabin, and the lower half makes space for the cargo hold. Now, from a side perspective, the cargo hold is divided into the forward and to the aft cargo. Now, why isn't the cargo hold for the entire length of the passenger cabin, you might ask? Well, many airliners have a fuselage tank or a center tank, which takes up a lot of space, and a wing box where the root of the wings are mounted to the fuselage and you need some space for the wheel bay to fit the landing gear <laughs> once it's retracted. <laughs> so your luggage is then loaded either into the forward or aft cargo. But the question is, where does your pet enjoy the luxury of air travel? Now there are three ways of transporting your pet. Now the first one and probably the least common one is the way of the pet in cabin option. Meaning you can actually bring your pet into the cabin and here comes a very big but. Now firstly, it depends on the size of the animal, what type of animal, the age of the animal, just to mention a few things on the animal side. Then there are countless airline regulations, length of the flight, the flight destination, seating position, handheld containers and bags, pet food brought onto the plane, etc. Now the list is endless and varies so dramatically from airline to airline. And be aware, any airline can refuse your pet in cabin before boarding the plane. But let's say you're meeting all regulations, Garfield will <laughs> have to remain inside its carrier for the entire flight time, placed under the forward seat in front of you. Now don't even think about letting him out and start a petting frenzy with your nearby passenger that's a big no-no. Even worse, imagine if your pet happens to bark or meow a lot in confined spaces. Be prepared to face some hateful looks from your other passengers, not even to mention if your best buddy is taking a Then we have this whole drama with, I need my animal to come along for emotional support, the so-called emotional support animal. But that meant that new regulations were put in place, size, type, and good enough reason for an animal, etc until one passenger took it too far and brought his peacock on board. You always have that one guy who ruins it for everyone, right? So the whole emotional support animal was put on hold since then. The second option and probably the most common way is to drop off your furry mate as check-in baggage. Now yet again, crate size and manufacture can determine at some airlines if Snoopy will join you on your holiday trip or not. Okay, let's say you've yet met the regulations and Scooby-Doo is coming along. Now, once you drop him off at the bulk <laughs> oversized luggage counter, he will get picked up by the ground crew responsible for your flight and then driven to the plane. But here yet again comes a crucial requirement that could decide if Bruiser comes on board or not. If it's a boiling hot day in Phoenix, Arizona, for example, 40 degrees and more, the airline will refuse to transport Beethoven because they don't want to be responsible in case he suffers from a heat stroke on the apron because the loading took longer than expected. And the same goes for freezing temperatures. Okay, we've overcome the heat stroke and the freezing to death temperatures. Lassie is finally being loaded. Now the ground crew places him on a conveyor belt leading into the forward cargo hold, where he then gets separated from all other cargo. Now the big question, why the separation and why the forward cargo hold and not the aft cargo hold? Primarily because most jet airliners have a pressurized and temperature controlled forward cargo hold. Now the temperature can be adjusted directly from the cockpit 
Now via the no talk, the notification to captain, the pilots will see if live animals are loaded in the forward cargo hold and then will set the temperature accordingly. On the Airbus A320, for example, hot air is derived from the engine bleed air and cooled down adequately in the air conditioning packs. The conditioned air is then piped into the cabin to warm and pressurize the cabin, hence to the forward cargo hold. But there's one downside to it. In case of rapid depressurization, passengers will get sufficient oxygen supply from the panel above your head, but sadly, Frank doesn't have that luxury. Now, the pilots will immediately <laughs> initiate an emergency descent to a safe altitude of 10,000 feet, so whilst your pet may not have any oxygen masks, the aircraft will be back into a safe, breathable air very quickly. Cody, come back, mate. I need you. <laughs> the aft cargo hold on most airliners is also pressurized for obvious reasons. Otherwise, all your enclosed toiletries, etc., would pop open due to the pressure difference. But often are not temperature controlled. And ever wondered why your luggage is pretty cold once you pick it up from the baggage claim? It was probably loaded into the aft cargo hold. Okay, why do the loaders have to separate grommet and can't just stack him in between your luggage? Now, primarily for the health and safety of the animal. Now, suitcases and bags are often just secured by netting, which can shift a little during takeoff turbulence and landing. And it's already stressful enough for Marley, but then being crammed between them makes it even worse. And obviously, if Lady has to do her business, you don't want that running through your suitcases, do you? Now, interesting side note. In my previous company, I had quite a few flights where we had transported deceased people in coffins in the forward cargo hold. And live animals were to never be loaded with human remains. Comment below if you know the reason why. Now, the third and probably the most extravagant option. Have your pet loaded onto an all-cargo aircraft or a combi aircraft. For example, if your pet is a tiger or a horse, the dimensions of the forward cargo hold on an A320 will be too small. You would then have to ship your pet with a cargo airline which specializes in such transports. Now, I've transported hundreds of horses in my career and I'm always amazed how these beautiful animals deal with the on and offloading. They are always accompanied by a few horse grooms who take care of them during long flights. Now, a video on a horse transport flight is in planning. Now, onto the final option, the Combi aircraft. Now, Combi stands for combination and was first introduced by VW after putting their versatile bus onto the market. Da ist er. Der VW Kombi. You could combine passengers in the front with freight in the back. Now, the same applies for Kombi aircraft, such as the Boeing 747 by KLM, as an example. As you see here, in the rear, you have the large cargo door, and at the front, the standard passenger version of the 747s. So you could technically book a ticket for your horse in the cargo half, chewing on some hay, whilst you're in the upper deck, sipping on some champagne. <laughs> What a way to travel. These aircraft, however, were really rare, and sadly, KLM has just recently retired their 747 combis at the beginning of 2020. What a huge loss to the aviation industry. Now, you could also say that turboprop aircraft are partly a combi aircraft, such as the ATR-72 or the Q400. They don't have the space required to fit a cargo hold below the passenger compartment, so instead, they store the cargo in a separate section of the cabin, either behind the passengers, like on the Q400, or in front of the passenger cabin, between the passengers and the cockpit, like on the ATR. And the final question, what does all of that have to do with my household refrigerator? Well, the answer can be found in the walls of the aircraft, where just like in your fridge, the cabin and cargo section are both filled with special thermal insulation. Now, in your fridge, the idea is to keep the cold in for your food to stay fresh. And on an airline, the same idea is used to keep the cold out. <laughs> So you and your pet stay warm and comfortable, no matter whether you're up in business class or down below with the bags. What was that, Cody? <laughs> and on a final note, and this is just my personal opinion, 
please don't bring your pet on your holiday flight. It's a super stressful experience for your beloved animal. The noise, the heat, the cold, the darkness, and the on and off loading are unpleasant situations for your best buddy. I know it's expensive, but dropping him off at an animal hotel might be the better solution. That's it for today. Please comment below if you want to share your pet on board experience with us. Did you enjoy this one, Cody? Bark if you did. <laughs> you have to get a very tough crowd here. But thank you very much for watching. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. Become a patron member, check. And don't forget, a good pilot and his dog <laughs> are always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe. We've done it, Cody. Well done. <laughs>